Praise God, praise God. We made it through Christmas. Well, we just came off that Christmas high. Amen. Amen. Now the wrapping paper is in the trash, right? At this point, the leftovers, you're, you're still looking in the refrigerator thinking, okay, can I get one more day or should we throw them out? So they're ready to be disposed of. But let's not forget the wonder of Christmas that we just celebrated. Amen. Our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to share this with you. And I hope this makes an impact in your heart as it has in mine. It's one of the most awesome summations of Christmas that I, I read recently. It was on a Facebook post, believe it or not. Some good stuff does come out of Facebook. Amen. Listen to this. At Bethlehem, he became God with us. At Calvary, he became God for us. At Pentecost, he became God in us. Is that not awesome? Now, joy is found when we experience all three facets of our relationship with God. It's not, it's not enough for him to just have come and be God with us. Amen. Amen. And it's not enough that at Calvary he became God for us because both of those were for one reason, that he would become God in us. And make sure, more than anything else, and this is just a little side note here. This is not my message, though I could, I could go that way. <laughs> Let's make sure that in 2020 that we make sure that we experience the depth, the richness, the the. the just all out 100% realization and awareness that God is in us. He's not just here with us. He didn't just come here on our behalf, but he did those things in order for him to become God in us. And if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have confessed and declared with your mouth by faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord, that you believe that, that God raised him from the dead after he paid for our sins at the cross, if you have made that declaration of faith and have asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior, you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you. Don't ever sell yourself short. Amen? Amen. 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 No matter what comes, no matter what comes, no matter what challenges, no matter what successes, no matter what we face in this new year, let us never forget He's our God and He, and he lives inside of us. His Spirit abides in us. Amen? Amen. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to be real, real transparent with you. I believe that we, should, we cannot forget what we just celebrated. And do not forget that your success in 2020 is going to be determined by the depth of that relationship. If you up until this point have not had a very close, in-depth, real, interactive relationship with God Almighty, I encourage you, please, I encourage you, let this weekend be the weekend. Let this be the start of a, of a new, deeper relationship with God Almighty. We're going to be talking about more of that next weekend. So starting this weekend, we're going to be closing the door, turning the page from one season into the next, and uh, using 2019 as a launching pad into 2020, a new decade, a year, I believe, of great moves of God. We're going to see great, great, great moves of the Holy Spirit this coming year in people's lives personally, uh, in families, corporately in families, in corporately in churches. And, and our church is, 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 is set for that. We're, we're set for it. We're ready for it. Amen. We're positioned for it. Amen. Amen. I said we're positioned for it. Amen. 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 Okay, to, to turn to somebody and say, I don't know about you, but I'm positioned for it. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean by great moves of God? God wants to move through you. God wants to use you. God wants to revive some things. God wants to breathe life into some areas that have grown dead or, or maybe are lying dormant. And this is going to be the year that if you'll allow him to, you'll experience the things with God that you've never experienced before. I'm assuming... That's why you're here. I'm assuming you just didn't come in to get off the street. I'm assuming you're here because you want God to do something specific in your life. You want God to do something special in your life. 
And I'm telling you, 2020 is the year. I could preach it. Oh, man, I could preach this message. All right. You ready? You ready? All right. We have been created by God to be dreamers. Not in a negative sense, but in the sense of accomplishment. There is not one individual that's ever been conceived, it's ever been created, it's ever been born into this world that God did not have plans to use that individual in a, in a very great way, in an extreme way, even if, if just, maybe just in the, in the sense of, of ministering to their family or ministering to nations. God created you and I to be dreamers. We're not content to just sit by and let life happen and just roll past us. Amen? Amen. God created us to be builders, to be organizers, to be planners, to be people of greatness. Amen. Amen. God created you for a purpose. Now, this is just an introduction. Don't, don't, get, don't, don't, don't suck up all this positive stuff because, you know, there's a message that's coming. But let it minister to your heart. The fact is, you have a role to fulfill on the earth that no one else can fill but you. No one. No one. God works through frail human beings like you and me. He is honored when we dream big for him. He is honored when we work to expand the kingdom. It honors God when you have big dreams. It honors God. For you to start, and I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you. I almost want to say I command you, but it's not my place to do that. But if you let me, I will. <laughs> I'm commanded you to dream big. I'm commanding you to start believing God for big things. I'm command. If you're the only person in your family that's born again, I charge you in the name of Jesus to start believing God for your entire family to come into the kingdom. Oh, you don't know my family. Honey, you don't know my family. <laughs> might not happen overnight. They might not become flaming evangelists. But the important thing is that they come into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Start believing God. Start talking about them like they're already saved. Stop talking about their sin. You don't want nobody talking about your sin. Stop talking about their sin. All right, I'm in my own business. <laughs> he created us to dream because it takes dreamers to bring big things into the realm of the natural out from the realm of the spirit. It takes big dreamers. It takes people of faith. He created us to glorify him with God-sized dreams, panoramic pictures in detail creative, beautiful things God expects us to, to want, to even desire. He, he just expects us to have the desire to see those things. And then let that desire turn into faith. And let that faith turn into what you're speaking and start talking about what God's going to do. Start talking about the dreams that God's placed in your heart. Amen? Yes. You were born to glorify him. And that kind of glory comes through big dreamers. Big dreamers bring glory to God. Psalm 1, verse 1, says that those who listen to God's word and allow his way to lead us, they shall become like trees planted beside waters, and everything they do shall prosper. Watch this. Let's read it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. Man, I could preach that. There's a whole message right there, the, 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 the degeneration of sin. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, or we could say in the word of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. This is what he thinks about. This is what he talks about. This is what he pictures in his mind. The Bible says that that person who delights in the word of God who allows God to develop some pictures on the inside. Look at verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And look at this. Read it with me. Ready? One, two, three. And whatever he does shall prosper. 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 Whatever he does is going to benefit somebody. Whatever he does or she does is going to bear fruit. 
and it's going to be fruit that remains, fruit that, that has seed within it to reproduce what you just produced. That's prosperity. Your destiny contains greatness. God designed you that way. For some of us, this might have been a tough year. But it's coming to an end. And this is the perfect time for us to start believing God for better things. For better experiences. See, he places pictures on the inside of us. He gives us the desire to dream big. Now, we know from, even from ancient history, both God's people as well as pagans, they built great monuments. Some of them stand to this day. You can go visit them. But you know what's unique about this whole thing? Each one started with a dream. Each one started, before that monument could be built, it started as a picture on the inside of someone's imagination. It started with hope. And all people have this in common. Everyone. Everyone. Because, you know, you could be sitting here going, well, that's easy for you to say, Pastor, you know, God's called you to this position that you're in, and, and, and God's blessed the ministry, and you get a chance to, to speak in front of hundreds and hundreds of people every week, and uh, that's great. That's wonderful, and that's an honor, and I consider it a privilege, and, and I thank God for this opportunity, but it's not unique. My call might be unique. My position might be unique. My job might be unique, but it's coming from the same promise keeper. It's coming, it's, it's coming to pass because God had a big dream. God had a dream that there would be a church in Ocean County. God had a dream that that church would expand from Bricktown and go into Bayville. And we're getting ready in the next few weeks to announce the next expansion. So do not miss the, don't have, don't miss the opportunity to hear what's going on here. And I'll be announcing that, obviously, in the middle of January when we get into that vision 2020 series. Amen? Amen. Now, sometimes due to distractions and complications, we lose sight of our dreams. We lose sight of who we were designed to be. At times, we we could lose sight because of success. You know, that's a real danger in all of our lives. Success sometimes is more dangerous than failure. You know, success, you've got to make sure you, you keep realizing and, and, and reminding yourself who made you the success. See, failure will keep you in God's face. Nobody wants failure. Amen? Amen. But success can be dangerous also. Success will test your character. Success will bring you to the place where you're going to come face to face with the fact that you're either full of yourself or you're full of God. Amen. I know we don't like to hear those words, but it's the truth. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, on the other end of the spectrum, fear can cause, excuse me, failure can cause fear to set in on us because nobody wants to fail. Most people will not step out and try to accomplish anything because because you, you start saying to yourself, but what if? What if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't come to pass? What if we don't make any money? What if we can't continue? What if we can't carry the bills? What if? I fall on my face, and none of us want to look foolish. And so failure can bring fear. And what fear does is fear drains us of our identity. I don't know if you've realized that or not. Fear will drain you of your identity. It will cause you to start looking inward. It will cause you to start becoming defensive. It will cause you to start putting walls up. We no longer identify ourselves with the greater one that's in us when we're fearful. We get our eyes on ourselves instead, and then we suffer from the limitations of humanity. I want to say that again. I don't know if you got a hold of that. See, see, when 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 we allow our fear of failure to grip us, we stop identifying with the greater one that's on the inside of us. Why? Because he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, A spirit of love and what? A sound mind. A sound mind. And if there's anything the enemy of your soul wants to keep you from, is a sound mind. He wants you to make decisions under distress. He wants you to make decisions out of fear. Because when we do that, we always make the wrong choice. 
Amen. Amen. Lately, it seems like we place way too much emphasis on our limitations, our weaknesses, our failures. It seems like we're obsessed with our brokenness. We brag about how wounded we are. And we pay little attention to the capacity we have on the inside of us by the Holy Spirit. And it's time for us to go from victims to victors. About three weeks ago, while I was pondering what's coming in this next year, which this year, to be truthful with you, was a little difficult for me. Now, my track record for the past five, six years has been, well, 10, 15 years ago, it would be right around this time that I would hear from God what the emphasis would be for the next year, coming year. Then it shifted about five or six years ago. And I started getting it like in October, November. It was, coming, it was really early knowing. This year, it didn't come that fast. It didn't come that easy. It didn't come that early. And I, I, I think I know why. Because there's so many natural things I'm involved in right now as pertaining to the ministry. You, you'll hear more about it next few weeks. That it seemed like, all right, I, I pretty much know what we're doing next year. I pretty much know the direction we're going in. And I almost missed it. I almost missed it. Because the emphasis for next year is not just natural. There is a spiritual emphasis for next year. So, so I was starting to recognize, hey, you know, I haven't heard anything yet. You know, what's going on? You know, we had this deal worked out. You know, usually around the fall, November. By November, I'm usually, you know, you're usually showing me. But I've been so busy this year with natural things. So I, I, I let it go with that. And, and then, you know, God speaks to you sometimes when you least expect it. That's why we need to have one ear, one ear in the natural and one ear in the supernatural. I don't know if you, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Because, you know, we're supernatural beings. Somebody didn't like that. The fact of the matter is we who are born again, who have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, are not just natural beings. Yeah, yeah. My feet are on this earth. My body is here occupying space on the earth. But my spirit is connected to heaven. Your spirit is connected to heaven. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's the head of the church, but the Holy Spirit, the administrator of the church, is here on earth. He lives inside of us. He tells us what's going on in the boardroom. Amen? So out of nowhere, I can't even tell you what the, what the context was. I hear this. I think I was sitting on my desk at my home office. And I'm sitting there, and I wasn't thinking about it. But all of a sudden, I heard this on the inside for 2020. You might want to write it down. We're going from pitiful to powerful, and our best is yet to come. And it, stru- it just struck me like, wow, going from pitiful to powerful. And you know, I didn't have to sit there and say, Lord, what do you mean? I started immediately thinking about the statement that I made to you before I said this. Let me read it to you again. Lately, it seems like we place way too much emphasis on our limitations, our weaknesses, and our failures. And, and some of us are obsessed with our brokenness. And we go around bragging about how wounded we are. Now, I understand. We all go through things. We go through seasons of grief where we need to, we need to, by nature, go through some of these experiences and some of these emotions. But some of us have made it a hobby. We're paying so much attention to our weaknesses, so much attention to our sins, so much attention to our brokenness, so much attention to our unresolved issues that we're just, we're just constantly, just constantly, just like bathing in this negativity. Jesus died for us to have the victory. 
And even some people that I've, I've known for many, 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 many years. I see some of this stuff that's being posted on Facebook. I, I hear some of the talk that goes on. And these are people that used to talk to victory, people that used to speak the word of God. And now it's just, poor me, poor me, poor me. I'm broken, I'm this, I'm that. I, I, I'm a failure, I'm a loser. Jesus didn't die for that. Now, he's empowered us to go through these seasons, but we're supposed to go through them. Are you listening? We're supposed to go through them. We should be able to stand back at some point and say, and it came to pass. It doesn't come to stay. It came to pass. Say it again like you know what it means. It came to pass. And you might be in that season right now, but guess what? It didn't come to stay unless you invite it to stay. It's not supposed to stay. You're supposed to experience grief. We're supposed to experience some reality checks. We're supposed to experience the dealings of God where he, sometimes he's got to bring us face to face with our mistakes and face to face with our failures and face to face with our sin. But we're not supposed to stay in that season. It's not supposed to come to make us pitiful because if we allow the Holy Spirit to navigate us through that, we'll come out on the other side powerful because no weapon formed against us can prosper. You listening to me? And he's made you more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Let me read to you from an article that I found from back in 2014 by a little-known author by the name of Joyce Meyer. You might have heard about it. You might have heard of her. Title of the message. Title of the article was in Charisma Magazine 2014. Do you want to be pitiful or powerful? I went, there you go, God. There you go, God. And this is what she has to say. We can spend a lot of time and energy trying to do things that will make us happy but our own efforts will never truly satisfy us. That's because God doesn't want our minds to be on ourselves all the time. He wants us to look past the things that are happening in our own lives and reach out to others and bless them. Because when our focus is on ourselves, we can end up feeling sorry for ourselves and face the danger of self-pity. How many have ever fallen in that trap of feeling sorry for self? And you have your little pity parties and you. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's dangerous. You know what's dangerous about it? Because sometimes we get more attention from people when we're. And all of a sudden now, now subconsciously, we like that attention and we go, oh, wow. As long as I'm a thumb sucker. I'm actually going to get people to pay attention to me. Like, gosh, you know, I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Do you need some help? Can I make a meal for you? Can I come and clean your house? Can I come? And, you know, you know, you know it keeps going. And you go, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> this sounds good, you know, because when I was strong, nobody called me up to see how I'm doing. Come on now. Oh, when I, when I had it all together, nobody called me up and said, hey, listen, maybe we can go out for a cup of coffee. Nobody offered to take me to the movies, and by no means did anybody ever offer me a meal. <laughs> Maybe this thumb-sucking thing ain't so bad. And what do you do? You start trapping yourself in your mind, your soul. You now start, you now, now you never meant to do it, but you start now thinking like a victim. And that one ends up happening because now, now your soul, oh, this is talking to somebody. Now, what happens is this. Now, your soul gets used to that. And then all of a sudden now, it's not enough. So now your next best thing to run to, to get attention, is you start going after. You start making a list in your mind of all the people that hurt you. It's this, that person's fault. You did this to me. And you did that to me. And you did that to me. And you did this to me. And I'll never forget when. And what ends up happening now? 
You now, instead of stepping into the powerful, instead, watch this now, instead of stepping into the new, you're stuck in the old. Why? Because the old now is serving your soul's purpose. And you get stuck. And you don't even, you can't even remember how it happened that you got stuck. And now all of a sudden now, oh, you're not that nice person you used to be. You're not that Jesus loves you person. Everybody that comes into your life, you look at them going, okay, now how are you gonna, how are you gonna take advantage of me? How are you gonna hurt me? How are you gonna wound me? How are you gonna offend me? And you start spending your time dwelling in the past, looking for retribution, looking for vengeance, instead of looking to see what does God want to do in this new season. I am telling you by the Spirit of God, let 2019 go with all of its garbage. Go ahead. You might as well. How are we going to do this? How, what does this journey look like from pitiful to powerful? Well, number one, you can't bring your pitiful into your powerful. You're either going to have one way or the other. You're either going to be pitiful or you're going to be powerful. There's no, you can't mix those two. You can't mix those two. And there's, there's a cost. You're going to have to let it go. If we're going to see our best days ahead, then we're going to have to let go of some things. Our pitiful past cannot be allowed to taint our powerful future. Amen. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. You can't pastor for 22 years without having occasional opportunities to get disappointed, to get offended, to be wounded, to have people talk about you. Some of the ones that you did the most for talk about you, criticize you, backstab you. And what are you going to do? You have to make a decision. I'm either going to stay in this and I'm going to become a, a pastoral statistic like so many others. They made it so far and that was it. Or I'm going to let it go. Say what Jesus said from the cross. Father, forgive them. They certainly don't know what they're doing. And move on and go into the powerful. Go into the next level. Go into the next phase. Go into the next realm. Why? Because God's got things for us that we haven't even imagined yet. And I'm not going to know about you. I'm not going to get stuck in the pitiful. I want to go to the powerful. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going from pitiful to powerful. And my best days are up ahead. Now, come on. Let's say it like we mean it. Ready? One, two, three. I'm going from pitiful to powerful. And my best days are up ahead. Let go in order to move forward, in order to embrace the new. We're going to have to say no to some things. Letting go in order to take hold of. Letting go in order to take hold of. And let's listen. The only good thing we can do with our past is to learn from it and then move forward. Don't keep rehearsing it. Just learn from it. Learn your lessons. Oh, Pastor, you don't know how many mistakes I made. No, I don't know. But you do. And learn from them. And if you're not sure about it, ask the Holy Spirit. Trust me, he knows. He'll let you know. Well, you set yourself up for this thing. Or or he'll say to you, I warned you not to get involved in that situation. Okay, now he'll do it in love. He doesn't smack us. He loves us. He speaks to us in love. He encourages us to move forward. But he is the spirit of truth. And if you ever want to know the truth about anything, you ask the Holy Spirit because he'll tell you. He'll tell you. He'll tell you if you were wrong. He'll tell you how to move on. You and I must say no to last year's offenses, last year's unforgiveness, last year's sin. You and I must say to our past, no, you can't come with me. I've got to go fresh, and I've got to go free. You listening to me? A couple of people got it. I can't experience my best by taking my old worst with me. That's a good one. I'll say it again. You can read it up there. I can't experience my new best by taking my old worst with me. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. This is such a good scripture. I'm going to start in verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. 
And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let me read it to you from the Berean Study Bible. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Say that, transformed. transformed. Into his image, look at this, with intensifying glory. Oh, man, that is good. With intensifying glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. If we're going to see our personal best in the future, it's only going to be because we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us with intensifying glory. What is intensifying? Is intensifying always stay the same? No, no, no. What, what happens? It's doing what? It's intensifying. It's getting stronger. It's getting more powerful. It's getting more effective. That's what we need. Okay? Listen to what I'm going to say good. Last year's anointing was for last year. In other words, the experience you have with the Holy Ghost in 2019 was for 2019. It may not be enough for 2020. Why? Because he moves us from glory to where? Glory. How? By the Spirit of the Lord. Did you notice that life's challenges don't get easier? I was listening to somebody today who's in their early 80s. Said, you know, I thought after I fought some really tough battles in my younger years that at some point in life, it would actually start getting easy. No. It doesn't get easy. We just get more equipped. You, you, you didn't hear me. The battles of life don't get easier, but we get more equipped. Why? Because it's that intensifying glory from the Holy Spirit that equips you on top of what he equipped you last year. And last year, you got equipped on top of what he equipped you the year before. And the year before that, you got, you follow me? We go from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. But if you're not in an active, in, just interactive relationship, like you're with an, another person, and you don't have that kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit, how's he going to equip you? It's like he's talking, and you're like, I don't hear you. Man, I, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. But I know what I mean. And I pray that, I pray that your heart opens it and receives that. In the days ahead, us just knowing the word is not going to be enough. It's going to take the word and the spirit working together. You're going to need to know the word, but you're also going to need to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. You're going to need to know when he's talking to you. You're going to need to hear it. You're going to need to know. You're going to need to recognize his voice. And he doesn't yell. It's a still small voice, but it's recognizable because it's the voice of Jesus. And he said in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice. So don't dare. If you've been the type of person up until this point, you go, you go around going like this. I don't, I don't hear from God. I don't hear from God. I don't hear from God. I don't, God never talks to me. Guess what? You're having what you say. You have convinced yourself that you're not hearing from God. But the truth of the matter is this. The Holy Ghost lives inside you if you're a believer. He speaks. He's talking to you. And most of the time, it's like when you listen to when you, let me describe it this way. How many of us, no matter how old or how, long, how young we are, have had the experience that your parents told you something, you didn't listen to them, and then afterwards you recognize they were right? Yeah. Come on, how many be brave enough? Yes. Okay. That's sometimes how we learn the voice of the Holy Ghost, because we hear something, we're not quite sure it's God, but then after the whole thing blows up in our face, we go, oh, wow, it was him. He was warning me. 
He was telling me. He was trying to divert me. He was trying to get me to go in a different direction. He was trying to get me to stop. He was trying to get me to go. Yes or no? Yes. If we're going to see our personal best in the future, it's only going to be because we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us with intensifying glory. What does that mean? What is glory? What is, we use that word sometimes as Christians, you know. Uh, you know, when I first got born again, you know, in, in, a, in a semi-Pentecostal church, all I heard was glory, glory, glory. I was like, okay, what does that mean? Glory, glory. <laughs> the definition of glory, as it is from the original language in Hebrew, is the heavy, weighty, rich presence of the Lord. And verse 17 states that freedom comes from the presence of the Lord. If you have never experienced that, that heavy, well, I don't mean heavy in a negative sense, I mean perceivable, like somebody just threw a blanket on you. If you have never had that experience from the Holy Spirit, I pray that 2020 is a year that that becomes common in your life. Amen. To know, oh gosh, the Holy Ghost is not just in me right now. He just came up on me. Number two, don't forget this is a series, so we're going to continue next week. But number two, according to the scripture we just read, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. Freedom comes from the presence of the Lord. But listen to this, but insight also comes from the presence of the Lord. So if you want to walk in wisdom, you want to walk in insight, if you want to walk in such a way where you're never caught by surprise because you got the Holy Spirit living in you, you better make it a, pre- a practice to get into the presence of the Lord in 2020. You see, it was while in the presence of the Lord that the prophet Isaiah heard these words that are recorded for us in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. This now is the message. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You shall, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In other words, I'm going to do something that's going to just blow your socks off. I'm going to do something. My desire, God is saying, my desire is to do something so spectacular in your life that it's going to be just like making a road in the middle of a desert and bringing forth rivers where there's never been rivers before and there's no water. In other words, he wants to do something that you walk away and say, wow, I thought it was impossible, but with God, nothing's impossible. First instruction. Let me read it again. Let me read it again because this is one of those scriptures that you you just can't let it go. Are you listening? Do, do not remember the former thing. So the so first step in how to experience the new thing is not to remember the what? The former things. Nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. First instruction he gives us. You want to experience the new thing? Forget the former things. Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. There's too many times we cannot take steps forward because our feet are connected to our mind. And if our mind is stuck in the past, your feet are stuck in park. Stuck. Stuck. Pastor, I just feel stuck. I feel like I'm not moving forward. I'm not, I'm not, I just feel like nothing new is happening in my life. Guess what? Check your thoughts. Are you constantly spending time dwelling on the past? And I'm not talking about just bad past. Some of us want to stick with our good past. Why? Because that was like, those are my golden days. I want to hold on to it. That one year when everything went right, we want to hold on to it. You're in company, oh, you go back to it. And, and everybody around you goes, yeah, I know, back in 19... 
can't, you can't get stuck there. We, we want to stick there because they felt good. It was good. It was good to be a winner for once. It was good to have something work out for you for once. And so we want to hold on to it. But what we fail to remember is this, that God was working you through the failures and God is working through the successes to get you to today. If you get stuck there, he's done. He can't do anything more with you and for you and through you. And we miss out on the new. We miss out on the future. The Holy Spirit through the prophets said, get rid of the former way of doing things, the former mindsets. Break out of the comfort zones, but it feels so good here, Pastor. <laughs> get out of the comfort zone. Well, I'm afraid to do this. I'm afraid to do it. I'm afraid to. What if? And what if it works? And what if it's God? And what if it turns out to be a success? He said, don't consider the things of old. In order to jump into the new, you and I must no longer consider, listen, the excuses we use to justify our inaction. Excuses. To consider means to ponder, to meditate on, to allow a say in the final outcome. When you're allowing your past to have a say in the final outcome, you're never going to see the final outcome that God had planned. You'll live your life out. You'll go to heaven. You'll play it safe. But when you get there, Jesus is going to go, glad you're here. But I had a whole bunch of other fun things for you to do. And you just stuck there. Couldn't get you to move. Couldn't get you to stir up enough courage. to take Because the miracle you were waiting for all those decades was one step in front of you. We don't want to have those kind of regrets. Amen? Amen. I got to stop. I got to stop. I don't want to. But I have to. We'll continue this next weekend. I just would like to pray at the point of where we're at. I don't want to go, because there's really some really good stuff ahead of us here, but I don't have enough time to really bring all of that out. So I'd rather stop here, and we'll pick up on this next week. Just join me in your hearts as I pray. Father, thank you so much for all that you've shown us in your word. Father, thank you that you're allowing us to, to work through some things in our souls. And Father, our desire is to get to know the Holy Spirit even so much more than we ever have. And so, Father, I pray that starting this weekend, Father, that each and every one of us will begin to pursue the Holy Spirit like never before. We'll begin to press in to your presence, Father, like never before, that we, Father, would go from pitiful to powerful as by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, God, that you continue all throughout this week, Father, to reveal more and more to us. Thank you for allowing us to see 2020. Thank you for allowing us, Father God, to be alive in this season, Lord God, of the church where our greatest days are up ahead, Father. I thank you for blessing every single person that's listening to this message right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for watching today. We pray this message has impacted and blessed you. New Beginnings Church exists to lead people into a life-changing, spirit-empowered relationship with Jesus Christ. If you'd like to support the vision here at New Beginnings, just head over to our Give page. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.